Normality. <laughs> yep. Uh, normality is one of the assumptions, most important assumptions, many tests like T-test, F-test, and uh, multivariate normality is one of the assumptions for maximum likelihood estimation in structure equation modeling. And actually, this is one of the arguments that um, PLS um, uh, um, users, they use to support, justify using PLS compared with uh, CBC methods. They say because um, multivariate normality assumption is not met in many of the studies, so we can use PLS because in PLS there is no assumption about the distribution of the data. Um, however, they don't say that there are some easy methods to address the normality, multivariate normality and or univariate normality in SEM. So don't worry about the normality, we test it, but if there was any issue, there are some methods I will share with you to address the issue. But normality is assessed in many ways in terms of shape, skewness, cortices. I want to first show you the normality curve. I believe when I say normality, many of you uh, uh, remember, I mean, the, the the, this normal curve, the bell shape comes to the mind of many of you. And uh, this is something that, um, why we say, we say normal? Because this is something that we have in the nature, right? So the distribution of data in the real world in nature is usually like a normal curve. And this is the assumption for many statistical tests. Uh, but sometimes the data that we use is, uh, uh, is positive skewed or negative skewed, means the tail is to the, goes to the right or left. So you see the shape is a bit different. Or sometimes it has two peaks. Uh, or it's flat, uh, or sometimes the peak is too sharp, or it's too, again, you know, the, uh, too flat, right? Uh, so, when we talk about the tails, it's about the skewness, and when we talk about the peak, is about uh, cortices. So, what we want, what is the um, perfect shape, is something like this, a normal curve, but sometimes it deviates from this shape. So what to do? So whatever I'm discussing now is about univariate normality. But again, multivariate normality is the assumption for maximum likelihood. So why we talk about univariate normality? Because to, uh, to improve uni multivariate normality, uh, one of the methods is to improve univariate normality. Um, I did a quick search in the literature and found there are some um, functions, there are some methods to uh, convert a distribution that is not normal to something like normal. For example, when you have a flat distribution like this, they suggest you use inverse function. So you just divide one by the data you have. Or when you have negative skewed distribution, means something like this, the tail goes to the left then you may use squared or cube uh, functions, means you squared all data that you have in your variable. And when you have positive skewed, you may use a square root and logarithm. Um, but first of all, using these functions makes the interpretation of the results very complicated because you need to first change your data and then run the test, then the results that you get is the results because the input was these function, the, I mean, the, was not the original data. So now how to interpret it in the way to have an understanding of the distribution, of the relationships between the variables uh, that we have in real, I mean, the real variables that we have or what I'm saying. Anyway, what I'm saying is, is very, difficult to interpret the findings, but um, I want to share a secret with you. Based on my personal experience, in most cases, they don't work. So don't waste your time with these, uh, these functions. Um, uh, I tried it in many of my studies and never they work. <laughs> so, um, as I mentioned, um, Normality is one of the assumptions uh, for um, CBSCM and this is why in Amos we have an output, we can get the output for normality. But um, in Amos you get the normality test for normality 
you test the normality using the shape by skewness and cortices. So this is the outcome, this is the report, you see AMOS output, this is the report for assessment of normality. So I show you something quickly here. You see when you select test for normality and outliers in the analysis properties output tab, you get these results. You buy, yeah, you will get this re the results that you can see here. And you can see there are uh, the minimum, maximum, and skewness, uh, critical ratio, uh, cortices, and critical ratio for cortices has been have been reported. So you may ask, okay, we already know skewness and cortices are the uh, measures for uh, you know uh, whether the there is a tail or a long tail or maybe the um, the, the curve is too, uh, the peak is too high or is too flat. So we know the meaning of skewness and cortices, but what's critical ratio? It's sort of, it's like Z value. Um, so it shows that whether this is significantly, it deviates from a normal distribution. And when it's, let's say, greater than 1.96 or is less than minus 1.96, this means that P value is less than 0.05. This means this value is significant means significant means significantly different from normal distribution distribution you know this is one of the few tests i told you before in the, one of the videos uh, that normality normality test is one of the few tests that we prefer we want non-significant results because the null hypothesis is uh, that the data does not deviate from normal distribution so we don't want to reject this null hypothesis we want to say our data is normal, right? So here we don't want significant results, but unfortunately here all of them are significant. Here all are significant, right? Why? Because one of the reasons is, uh, yeah, of course they may not be, yeah, they may deviate from normal distribution, but one of the reasons also can be the sample size. In SCM usually we have large sample size, 300 cases here. So this impact the, uh, results so any significant test that you uh, run like um, the critical ratio here so the these usually uh, uh, become significant and this is not actually so uh, I don't suggest we just refer to critical ratio to say is uh, normal or not normal so anyway uh, how to identify normality okay there are some references I inserted here but Number one, of course, critical ratio. This means if it's in the range of uh, minus 1.96 to 1.96, this means that the p-value is greater than 0.05, this critical ratio columns, and this means the distribution is normal. But in most cases, you can't make it. Then they suggest, okay, because the critical ratio is sensitive to sample size, so let's just use skewness and cortices values. So, uh, Barbara suggests that skewness between minus 3 to positive 3 is considered as normal. And here you can see they are between minus 3 to 3. And for cortices, they say between minus 7 to 7, which is fine here. And then we have multivariate normality. So for multivariate normality, you have a cortices value and critical ratio. So again, for critical ratio, um, yeah. It's far from 1.96, so it's significantly different from normal distribution. But they say for multivariate cortices, as long as it's less than 5, that's fine. But here is 100, this, oh my god, it's too far. So this is based on the test, the results you see here. Um, this is not normal. I mean, multivariate normality assumption is not met. So what to do? Don't worry about it. If you want to improve the distribution in terms of normality, remove outliers and influential cases. They usually improve the distribution and distribution becomes more normal. And another method is you may use one of the estimation methods that the multivariate normality is not their assumption. We discussed this before, for example, one of them that I suggested. The problem was it was dependent on the sample size. Another one, you need a large sample size. So again, this is not really feasible. Number three, which I always use in my studies, is use bootstrapping procedure. It is already in AMOS software. So it's very easy. You just select something that I will show you later. You just tick something and then you get the bootstrapping results. But for bootstrapping, there is no assumption about the distribution of the data. 
So it's an assumption-free procedure, it's an assumption-free method. So use bootstrapping. Uh, even if you don't, if even if your data is uh, normal, I suggest you use bootstrapping. If you want to know more bootstrapping, um, you can refer to the material that they have provided. But in Amos, it's very easy. Just you need to select something, then the results that you get is computed based on or estimated based using bootstrapping procedure.